And now for our weekly news segment. Hey, everybody. Happy hey, weekend. Hey, How's it going? What's up? Good. I caught a little bit of the eclipse, which was really nice. Nice. Uh, yeah, it was beautiful. The first time I was like, where is it? Because it was kind of cloudy. And then it came out of the clouds and it kind of blinded me. <laughs> and then I put my, my glasses on. And I took some really nice videos, actually. I didn't get as nice of a view as you did. Um, but it's still spectacular. And um, yeah, and it's going to be crazy in 2027, like you said, in three years from now. Right. It sounds really Dude. cool. We had one era of there. Well, I, want, I want to bring up, uh, if I find it, bring up the the eclipse, the future eclipse coming up the the path. It's it's mm -hmm. cool to look at, but yeah, it doesn't have to be. It could be Spain too. Spain is going to be a hot spot for eclipses. Um, so like the next the next three, well, I think oh, really? we'll all go through Spain, and the the twenty twenty seven one that goes through Egypt will also go through southern Spain. So that's another possible Monerotopia location, right? The, the southern Spain. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, that'd be pretty amazing. And maybe you can have um, it through like a prolonged because if you tie it around Monero Con, say if it happens again in Portugal or whatever, and you kind of like people just take trains from Spain to Portugal, it's so like a long week of Monero stuff to conference. Oh, that'd be crazy. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And speaking speaking of Monerotopia, guys, we're still we're still on hold in terms of final decision whether or not we're making the pivot to Mexico City or not. It's still very much looking like that's going to happen. So we're, we're, we're closer towards that than I'd say staying with Argentina at this point. Um, Tux, Tony, what, what do you think about that? I know I asked you, I'm ask, asking you again, what's your, your current take? I'm, I'm for, I'm for uh, uh, Mexico just because, I mean, Tux has been there. I haven't last year, but just because um, we are, like you already know the venue, you already know what's happening. And then this time you can make it so much better and you don't need to go into the unknown it's closer uh, to you it's not as much of a flight and uh just again like i was kind of impressed by the people and how um happy they were to have increased revenue from <laughs> from this happening so it kind of makes yeah. it go make them really happy like even happier spread actually the so what what the reason why it's, it's taking us a little bit longer to make the final decision is with the marketplace so we wanted to have the same girl that ran it last year and we've been working with her but the venue has already been reserved by another marketplace for the weekends that we wanted. Uh, but 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 now we've reached out to this new marketplace and they're also very enthusiastic to work with us because they've heard what happened with the other one. Uh, and that we what we might even end up doing is at having the conference go from like Thursday through Sunday uh, and have four days and actually have her do the marketplace Thursday, Friday, and then this woman does hers on saturday sunday which i'm thinking why not the more the merrier and then it extends the conference because the conference ends up being like a marathon those two days it's like you have like eight talks happening on the main stage and like another 10 talks happening on the remote stage it's like too much it's like you can't you're, you're missing something at all times right yeah. so if we if we make it like four days people can kind of like you know maybe we only have you know, like three talks on the main stage each day or something right so then people get to spend time in the marketplace hanging out with monero people doing the hackathon thing if we got that going on so Absolutely. not the worst idea thinking about maybe doing that thursday friday saturday sunday no i think it's such a good idea because yeah. people fly from all over the place all the way there yeah. so what ends up happening as i've seen in miami and then also in mexico mexico people stay longer than two days anyway because they want to hang out because they're all together so they stay four days or they stay maybe five or you know more than the conference so i think mm -hmm. yeah for sure i think that'll be awesome yeah we did friday saturday sunday last year anyway because we had to add friday because we had too many talks oh yeah Thur <laughs> thursday yeah. friday it would i think it would just make for uh a nicer experience It'd be less less hectic and people just get to kind of casually enjoy the bonding time that would be nice uh, yeah 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 it's sad that it won't be uh in argentina um I know, that's, uh, that's yeah yeah i know you were excited for that i was like oh that's yeah. that's pretty awesome buenos aires that's cool but mexico city is probably i mean it's mexico is still extremely accessible to other people around the world and it mm -hmm. is closer to probably the majority of the people that are going, I yeah. I imagine. Probably yeah, yeah. to the majority of the people that are going, it's a lot closer. So 
It's like, are are we missing out at a on a moment in Argentina in Buenos Aires where we could really like be a part of some adoption phase that takes place with regards to crypto? I don't know. I don't know. That's that's like the the fear there, but mm. yeah. I don't know. Uh, did you hard. did you see George Gammon's post? Like he he was just down there for a week. I don't know if you follow him at all or if you mm. guys ever see any of his stuff. No, 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 not so much. No. Or maybe we could bring it up in the news. Actually, when you do the news, I'll bring it up. But he was basically down there for a week, um, and he was he's he's basically saying that from what he perceived, there is like no crypto adoption in Argentina. Oh, interesting. Yeah, which is really interesting. I, I think he kind of missed the mark. I don't know, like, what he was doing. Like, yeah, it's he like it's it's like it's like he didn't hang out with local Argentinians when he was down there that are in crypto that could have showed him the ways. It's like mm-hmm. so I found it very odd. But yeah, basically he's saying that everybody's just using pesos and dollars, and that nobody accepts Bitcoin. Nobody even wants gold, and he has this whole theory as to why that's the case. Um. But I think he kind of missed the mark on that. I don't know if anybody else saw that. Maybe we could bring we could bring that up in the news. I'll, I'll find the clip. Yeah. Well, go ahead, Tony. Take take it away. While yeah. I look for that clip, and okay. let's move forward. Yeah, uh, it's kind of hard to generalize when it comes to that. You know, when you go to a new country and to try and see. Um, like I was kind of shocked by El Salvador, for example, when people started going there, and then people were not so maybe happy about Bitcoin, like right. two years ago or one year ago. So. Um, it's interesting. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, like Tuck said, I actually brought up the uh, neurotransaction chart just so we can take a look a little bit. Um, highest 140K when we had the um, spam attack. And then kind of picked up again now and we hit 110K uh, yesterday. So, um, but what's beautiful, <laughs> what's beautiful about Monero is that whenever uh, it gets attacked, it's only an opportunity for us to get way, way stronger. So, from so if you're an attacker that wants to attack Monero, just just know that we're gonna use that to make it way stronger. Um so we don't mind these attacks at all. Um and it yeah, it's it's very interesting. Then um also this is pretty big, so we should discuss this. So chain analysis hires former IRS criminal investigations chief Jim Lee. He used to work at the IRS, I think for the for 27 years. So quite a long time, and then he was chief for, yes, yeah, so 29 years total of service, and then three years at IRS CI chief. So he has a lot of experience in the IRS, and he um, he's gonna work. He retired in March, as far as I know, and now he's working with chain analysis. Um, so he's helping those agencies better use chain analysis data and tools to fight crypto crime. And he he worked on some really big projects. He took down. He sees crypto from Hamas. He worked on the, where is it? Uh, where he talks about the Hydra darknet market. Yes, so he helped down take uh, the um, Hydra marketplace and welcome to video, which had a lot of child abuse and uh, sexual exploitation. So um, he worked on a lot of really, really big projects um, and he was successful in it. And it's gonna be interesting the way, like I wonder how he views this whole situation um because he may be actually like he's working with chain analysis and he's benevolent and he actually just cares about actually working towards taking down these criminals and terrorists but then you know his work is going to be used negatively as well on the larger population so it's interesting then um (laughs) this one was cool so good times ahead of Running a narrow node from home, researchers unlock fiber optic connection 1.2 million times faster than broadband. And people are excited in the comments. Chila wrote 1.2 million times faster. Holy guacamole. I don't think my little brain can even imagine that. That used to be. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is, uh, you know, this is a big deal, right? Because one of the things that's often discussed is the, is the scalability of Monero. And, you know, our, what Arctic kind of always points out as being the thing that uh, potentially holds up Monero's ability to scale is, uh, you know, internet bandwidth, particularly for upload uh, on the upload side. So, you know, if this if this is actually uh, real and it appears to be, I don't know how long it's going to take for it to 
essentially be implemented where we start to f feel the effects of this evolution, uh, but it's going to make Monero scaling issues kind of go away overnight in that regard in terms of internet bandwidth issues. So that's, that's, that's tremendous. It's always been right. The theory, right. That uh, the technology will catch up and internet is going to get, you know, internet will improve and storage space will improve, but right now we're seeing it happen in real time in a big way. So that's yes. super exciting. So they say that in the average American uh, household, any download rate is above roughly 242 megabytes per second. Now, uh, in the UK, they, in Aspen University, they recently managed to close about 1.2 million times that rate using a single fiber optic cable. So what does it mean? The international team achieved a data transfer rate of not gigabytes, but 301 terabits um, or 301 million megabits per second by actually new wavelength bands normally are reachable in the existing optical fibers, um, <laughs> which is just, it's just crazy because, you know, not more than a decade ago, we used to, um, like the iPhones, I, my first iPhone had, I don't know, four gigabytes of memory in total or eight gigabytes and just things get exponentially faster and more uh, download speed and more memory and, um, Yes, it's incredible, and it's going to affect Monero in big ways whenever it's going to um, to come out. That's insane. Also, I wanted to say, um, actually, Romania. So we may have <laughs> shitty roads, but we have we're in top five when it comes to internet in the world. We're up there with Hong Kong and everybody else. So our roads are not good, but we have really good internet. <laughs> like really good. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, I bet in the future a lot of computers and devices will will be able to terminate fiber on top of it um instead of having to go from fiber to rj45 right yeah, much I faster. oh yeah it's gonna be really interesting um let's talk about uh shadow strike and then we're gonna get into luke and other stuff other stuff in a little bit but um like so Body said in the comment section, the cool thing about one terabits per second number is that it was achieved by, with existing fiber. Only modems need to be replaced. That's, yeah, it's insane. It's yeah, insane. I mean, this is not something that your phones, you know, or like even your, your desktop computer would probably be able to, like, right now, current internet speeds are very achievable for any device, but like terabits per second, that's like the amount of processing power required to handle that amount of traffic is insane so yeah. there will be need to be some technical developments in the uh you know for the the modems and the routers and stuff but it's cool that they can achieve those speeds though that's that's pretty awesome to see yeah i mean that that's a major breakthrough for monero right i mean my you know my understanding is that's that kind of the biggest impediment to monero's ability to scale is the upload bandwidth mm-hmm <laughs> I mean, the question is, though, how how much are these like second or third world countries going to improve in their Internet? Because the biggest problem I see right now is the ability for people in other countries that have very poor Internet, um, very poor coverage, the ability for them mm -hmm. to sync. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we'd have to see improvement globally, right? Yeah, we'd have to see. Obviously, you're always going to have areas that are much further ahead than others. But I think the, the average is going to go up for sure. I think the average for sure too, because if not, yeah. and if the larger countries just develop and develop, it's going to be pretty much night and day <laughs> when it comes to development. Like we're going to look like aliens when you go to other places, <laughs> essentially. Um, but yeah, cool stuff. Now let's talk about Shadow Strike. So Shadow Strike is a Monero to Bitcoin Lightning payment service. Load up to your uh, load up your Tor browser and try it out. Go as low as you want. Top limit of 0.5 XMR for zero con transactions. This is really new code. Please try it and give feedback. Why Bitcoin Lightning? You wonder. Hard to attain instant transactions, non-public transactions, large amount of merchant exchanges accepted but don't accept. Uh, Monero with Monero is the payment and only routing over Tor. Uh, the site can see who the sender is or their wallet history. You can see where the payment goes through. The receiver of the LN payment can see that the payment is coming from Monero, thus removing chances of taint. Additionally, this is an experimental run. It doesn't have big channels. I need to see how it fares with concurrent users. 
And uh, Vic wrote, cool, when we have lightning and cake, we'll have X mark lightning swap payments. So that's interesting development. Uh, then this is huge. Like, I can't believe it's been almost 10 years of Monero. And that's going to be on April 18th. It's really big. So my, how my, does... my, my second child. <laughs> that's <laughs> <turned> 10. <laughs> both, both, both my children are turning 10. Oh, actually. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So Monero Fox wrote a um, <laughs> post and software. <laughs> that's funny, dude. Um, so you can join the Monero run and have all your coins in your own wallet during XMR, XMR's birthday. Um, Monero runs are becoming harder to do just because we're not in as many exchanges anymore. <laughs> and we'll talk about Kraken and actually after I'll skip to it. Um, and then the listing Monero in certain countries. Uh, write a tweet, post blog, obviously, you know, be, um, let's all engage on social media and let's push the 10 year anniversary of Monero and uh, have more people maybe discover Monero on that day. Uh, turn your computer, start mining, buy something from a store using Monero, just use Monero essentially and um, celebrate it. Because um, 10 years ago, something that actually has the potential to give people hope has been born. So. Really cool. What, what is April 18th, actually? What day is it? 18th? That's yeah, yeah, that's a good Thursday. question. Um, it's next Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, I guess we'll, next we'll, week. maybe we'll do our Monero Topia show on Thursday night. Yeah, or some something, at least like, even small. But it's, it's a big thing. Who should we get a special? We need like Fluffy Pony to come on, a special guest, or uh, oh, yeah. some some old school Monero. Binary Tough Fate. Too. That'd be awesome to get Binary come on. <laughs> What if like somehow we make the show on Thursday and then we have Satoshi Nakamoto coming in and like <laughs> all are joining the show? We could get Nicholas Van Saberhagen yes. and, and yeah. talking to to Andre of Zano. I don't know if you guys watched those interviews, um, yeah. but he brought him up again a couple of times, and I was asking him like you know what Nicholas Van Saberhagen thinks of Monero and stuff. Um, so it's he's he's around. According to Andre, he's around and accessible. He just doesn't want to really like come out and talk. And I don't think it's so much, I guess, obviously he wants to maintain his privacy, but it seems more like he's just kind of a, a shy person too. It sounds like the way Andre's put explaining. Mm. What if, what if we get him on the show? Obviously no camera. We use a voice modulator. Yeah. Yeah. When, well, well, I was going to, yeah, yeah, I was going to try to get him as a, as like a speaker at Minerotopia, right? That'd be amazing. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, but definitely. I mean, uh, you know, he'd be remote and anonymous, but that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I guess we're gonna have the show on Thursday, or something, at least. Let's do it. Yep. Um, and then our general fund on Twitter donations alert donation alerts from community members privacy by default. Yeah, you can follow and then notifications on uh, donations and how much people donated and people donate quite, quite a bit of money actually from 0 0.002 to 99 to 400 on their own mm -hmm. and it's coming in there's those hundred donations that keep coming in consistently mm -hmm. jesus oh my god 2696 <laughs> yeah so and don't good. forget, yeah, when we get a nice little boost in price too, I mean, our our treasury is going to go up overnight, right? Like that's going to be that's going to be nice too. Absolutely. Um, actually, before I get into this, because then we're in Rockneum, let me get into other stuff, and then I'll go back to it. That's pretty big. I'm going to go to Kraken just a little bit because we talked about it previously yeah, about Monero. So Kraken released Monero in Ireland and Belgium, effective 10th of June 2024. Um, well, let me see. Here's what you need to know. Oh, we had an article about it. We got Stephanie saying hello from Texas. What's up? Hey. Cheers. Hey, Stephanie. We, we, we got met her Yeah, we met her down there. It's awesome. Hope you're enjoying the gratuitous. <laughs> um, what's about some legislation or something that has been passed? I think in Europe. And now, but it's interesting. Just so, just in Ireland and Belgium. So, uh, if you're in Europe, you can still get um, 
uh, when I run Kraken. I think the UK, so Ireland, Belgium, and UK, I think you can't. I'm pretty sure. And then the rest. Yeah, can. this this is big news. Yeah, I was trying to get somebody to come up and talk about that this week. Somebody, uh, you know, who, who lives in one of these areas that wants to jump on. So if, if you're out there, come on up during viewers on stage. Mm-hmm. We want to hear about the D-list. So it's Belgium and Ireland. We have some, I, I maybe I'll try to get some. I, I know some people from Ireland. I think. Yeah. That I, Anybody I wants to, to jump up and give us the lowdown. But yep, more of the same, right? But Kraken was kind of a Kraken was our, our safe space. We, <laughs> it's really our our final, you know, refuge, right? In terms of being connected to centralized exchanges, is is cat is Kraken. So Kraken is starting to crack. <laughs> um, there are a couple others in European regions, but in the U.S., Kraken's like pretty yeah. much the the only big player yeah Which... so we'll see if they hang strong in the u.s i mean uh that'd be crazy that'd be crazy if kraken delists in the u.s mm-hmm. i don't know guys the the congressional might run might start again if, if i see that happening i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna stand on the sidelines guys i'm not I mean, going down see, without a fight there's no Absolutely federal not. uh regulations against it yet but you know new york as a state now can't they can't sell it there but they can sell it anywhere else in the united states so you know in new york it's never been legal to to list monero on an exchange in new, in new york oh, that's crazy well i shouldn't say that right i mean we before the regulations no it, it, they've never they've never done it right you, you need a bit license in new york um no exchange currently lists monero in new york but it's just never been tested uh, nobody's no exchange has, has really tried to do it and work through uh, the regulations with the regulators. I'm of the theory that we can list Monero here in New York. It's just nobody's tried to go through the process of doing it. As crazy as it sounds, um, I've spoken to Vic about this you know many times in the past. Yeah. Uh, so and you know, keeping New York cut out of Monero has has definitely been uh has definitely hurt monero's growth in terms of liquidity and people being able to get into it for for sure i think so for sure just because of the yeah. way new york is because it's very right like cash down and like you know you have little shops everywhere yeah i mean a lot a lot of the money that went into bitcoin early you know a lot of a lot of it was coming out of new york mm-hmm. well um, i think we need to like like you know start panning towards the the developments in decentralized exchanges and of course things like yeah. Havino. because i mean having having it on centralized exchanges is like that that is like a big part for i mean finance is debatable but at least for kraken <laughs> for liquidity that's that's kind of a big deal and it's just a place where I, like millions of people already have account on so it's like oh monero's there they can just buy it right there yeah. but i think this year, next year, these centralized exchanges will definitely take off, and not just for Monero purposes, but uh, for other other cryptos and other projects too. So, yeah, it's it's another example of Monero being forced to evolve, right? Uh, exactly. We see the, these flood attacks, and what's Monero doing? It's upgrading its ring signatures, right? It's it's rushing now to do it. We see these delistings happening, and what's Monero ecosystem doing? It's rushing to improve the ability to on ramp and off ramp in decentralized ways, um, right? Yeah, like you said, Avino just la- they launched, right? Yeah, we'll talk about it after actually. Okay. Sort of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not quite. We have Sarai is like right there. Although I don't know how with with Luke putting all his effort now in full membership, I have to imagine like he's gonna have to I don't know move away from Sarai for a moment. But I know that's super close. Tux, do you have any insight into how close that is to be being completed? The launched? testnet's gonna be launched again next. It's gonna be relaunched next week. The yeah, testnet. so it's like right there. It's crazy. I mean, it still has a lot of work, but okay, okay. We need to clone this guy. We've got to clone Luke. Like, <laughs> yeah, this guy, he's like doing some of the most important stuff in the space right now. And it's just like, well, because there's only so many people, yeah, there's on only him. so many people that can do it, right? In the in the world, right? That have all, all the, the all those skill sets yeah. and the desire. But yes, um, we're all very thankful that Luke decides to take his time for this small little niche crypto project. Uh, <laughs> you know, 
this shadowy program. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Also, like, what is, what's impressive about him is his age. He's young, right? Like, oh my God, yeah. yeah. He's 19, 20 or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. He's young, so that's also really impressive. Um, yeah. Uh, one more thing on Kraken. So not only the, the listings, but more KYC coming our way. So um, what's new? Additional identification required. If you're a non-Spanish national foreign identity card, if you're a Spanish national, you know, bring more stuff. Complete an app. This, so this is new, I think, because um, I haven't really used Kraken. Um, a video type check with, uh, which ensures the face presented to a device belongs to a live human being. So you gotta open your camera and make a little video, and then refresh proof of address, provide a document pr evidencing your proof of address. So a document pr evidencing your proof of address. So quite a lot of stuff. Your ID, proof of address, a video of you, all this stuff. Um, we have seen that people have been able to bypass the video using AI. And then actually, which is crazy, so you can actually use AI to make yourself an ID. That looks really realistic. And it's been able to actually fool these platforms as well. Um, so... Yeah, I guess in the future that's gonna be the leeway. You know, don't don't take it from me. I didn't say that, okay? <laughs> but um, you know, just saying that that's gonna be a, a thing because people have already done it. Um, but you didn't hear that from me, so. All right, uh, Havino, let's do a bit of uh, Havino. Then we're going to um, full membership proofs and stuff like that. So Havino one point zero has been released today. Um, where is it? Uh, Untraceable posted a tweet. He said, Nero delisted from Kraken for Ireland and Belgium two months after he tweeted privacy is not a crime. Uh, in other news, Vino version 1.0 has been tagged. A BISC fork for Monero to fiat crypto peer to peer trades. So um, then they wrote what changed and new contributors and stuff like that. So that's exciting. So Hubino's coming too. We have a lot of um, important development coming on our way. Yeah, so. not quite ready. I, I would sir, um told me that they're doing some internal testing on the mainnet and the binaries aren't released yet. Of course, you can compile from source if you want to, but I guess probably next week it'll it'll be officially out. Hmm. Yeah, I would love to get Woodser wow. uh, on Monerotopia or Monero Talk once he yeah. launches. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, now let's get into this stuff. Um, now, if you want to hear a more in-depth view of what we're going to talk about right now, go to last week. Luke, he talked about it in depth. Um, he's the one behind it, so he's going to offer way more and better information. But... Uh, Monero posted, we're excited to announce that the proposal from Cypher Stack to review generalized bullet proofs, which is part of the effort to implement full chain membership proofs, was fully funded by our generous community within 24 hours. Thanks to everyone that donated. Um, so that's awesome. Wait, do I have a link right here so we can go? Yes, it do. Uh... Yeah, so the first milestone um, has been covered. In under 24 hours, it's quite remarkable the way the community gets um, gets together and, and just donates and gets stuff really funded really fast. Uh, that's really amazing. Um, but yeah, guys, use your, you use your Monero and donate to these projects and these people because they put in a lot of work. And it's only going to make Monero better, obviously. So it's kind of like you're investing a little bit as well. Um, yep, so that's, that's uh, uh, very important what they're doing there. Uh... They're reviewing generalized bulletproofs, and that's that's one necessary component for what needs to be done to uh, move towards full membership proofs. Quick thing: Fun. somebody said, uh, somebody said in the comment section, um, "I deal with Kraken all day, every day on my employer's account. Kraken is turning into shit fast. They're introducing lots of bugs and not even responding to questions about these new features anymore." So. Uh oh. That's a negative review. What's the guy behind? Oh, Jesse Powell. Jesse, but he's not. Uh, yeah, he's not there anymore, right? I, yeah, we never I got him on Monero Talk or anything. Uh, oh, that'd be awesome. No, nah, awesome. we were never able to. I don't know. He was. He's not. I don't know. But he. He's. He's definitely pro Monero. 
Yes, we yeah, need to get this thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even sure what he's. I think he's still part of Crack. I'm not even. I haven't kept up with him, but um, yeah, no, that'll be awesome if we, if we mm -hmm. can get him on the show. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's the CEO anymore. Obviously, I guess he still has his his stake there. You know, he still own, he's an owner, yeah. uh, but I don't think he's actively uh, managing it in any way. Yeah, but he does he does he does care about privacy, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's hard to be in his position, actually, in a way, because running an exchange and obviously if you know you go full out what you want it, you know, with privacy and stuff, you're gonna just get shut down mm -hmm. altogether. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to balance it from his side, but he's been out, outspoken about privacy, and you know it's probably the only central exchange that ever tweeted at least privacy is not a crime or something along those lines, you know. So yeah, I mean he all kinds of views. He kept Monero on there uh, in the U.S. You know, Coin, Coinbase that. never did that. Coinbase never listed Monero. Yeah. Yep. For and just like looking at the effort, actually, like they, they list the Monero and they try and you can see that they're trying their best to keep Monero on it mm -hmm. because it's kind of like in regulation gets better now and, you know, more robust and whatever. And you see Monero crippling in certain countries like you're going to see in Ireland, Belgium, New York, whatever. But like, you know, you, you can see the intention behind it, at least they're trying to have it on us, you know, as much as they can, as many places. Um, then, so this post from Nero again, Luke Parker has put forward a proposal to develop, prove, review, and audit full chain membership proofs, a trustless solution based on generalized bullet proofs in Monero. This guy is doing a lot. And again, you should definitely go to last week's talk to uh, learn more about it from Luke himself, which goes in depth into, um, all this stuff. And, uh, again, we should make a Monero proposal to clone Luke. We can get him a private mm -hmm. chef. So he doesn't have to do anything but just work on this stuff yeah you could bring the proposal up again if you click on that link um yep yeah so we kind of oh no that's general world for this is it yeah this one right? yeah so we mentioned it earlier guys go ahead and donate this one just just dropped be part of history here you were there you contributed you helped make this happen Luke's asking for three, well, you know, 3,000 XMR to put towards this entire project. Out of that, a few hundred's gonna go to him, regarding the work that he's gonna be doing, and then he's going to be managing this other work that he's gonna outsource to other consultants and experts. Can't um, donate to this one yet. It's still gotta be approved once it's merged. Oh, it hasn't been approved. All right, I thought it was merged yep. already. Still okay. open. So wow. you can upload it. You can upload it on the GitLab okay. if you sign in there, register, you can upload. If you go to the bottom of the, the message, scroll down. Yes. Mm. I'm gonna go even... There you go. Oh. Yep. You can All give right. it a thumbs up if you approve. Give it a thumbs up, Tony. Oh. Um, I'm not signed in, actually. So I'm not oh, yeah, right. well, well, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a thumbs up. I would have. It's going to be approved. It's going to be merged. Uh, once it is, send, send some Monero. Yeah, and he's very open, obviously, about the whole thing. Milestones. I just can't, you know, this is. I just can't wait to we're we're at the day where we're celebrating the the launch of the implementation of full membership proofs. I mean, that's gonna be that's gonna be amazing. It's between, not that far away. Yeah, but just between these stuff happening and the fiber and so um, it's yeah. Next year we're gonna have some really interesting stuff. It's just like looking back and. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, okay, let's talk about Rocknium now a little bit. We have been talking about him for the past couple of shows just because he's just been doing a lot of work and um, it's really amazing. So actually, let's skip and talk about him a little bit. So who is Rocknium? He's done a lot for the community. He's an empirical microeconomist and he worked on discovering a mining pool misconfiguration, privacy vulnerability report to Exodus Wallet, a formula for accuracy of guessing when there are real spends using fungibility defects, identification of privacy reducing non-standard transaction fees, analysis of the privacy impact of Mordinals, Monero NFTs, uh, he had, he's been in Monerotopia, so a lot of stuff. He's been working in Monero for quite some time, and he's doing uh, amazing stuff. This one specifically, 
uh, which has three milestones and is in total of 204 uh, Monero. Oh, somebody said uh, you got this restaurant in Kenya. Cool. Except in Monero and trying to get more exposure here for both Monero and the restaurants. Awesome, Dennis. Cool, man. Yeah, jump jump up if you'd like to tell us about it. Show yeah. us a video of it or something. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, in Kenya. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so this is more about uh, what happened with the spam attack and uh, him conducting more research, uh, essentially, and then some items to complete the draft research bulletin. He talks about derived the trade-off function between ring size and transaction fees. Um, he's going to work on this with Arctic Mine, I read. Um, I, must have missed it. I must have read Arctic Mine somewhere. Uh, but similarly, the combined Black Marble attack and Dolmage Mendel zone uh, decomposition estimates any changes in the real spend H distribution during the spam incident, create a node network crawler that seeks the, res the source of large transaction volume. So he's going to conduct a lot of research. Mm -hmm. into this thing. Yeah, I mean, he, he's he's our, our ring signature improvement expert, right? He's kind of, he's doing these statistical studies of uh, Monero's ring signatures and finding the, the weak points. And then that information is used to kind of improve our, our decoy selection algorithm, right? Is end up what's happening. Uh, but once again, hope, hopefully these, these will be problems of the past. Uh, and we get full membership proofs, but it's, it's nice to see that we still have people focused on this because if, you know, full membership proofs doesn't come or doesn't come soon enough, uh, we could still, you know, imp continue to improve ring signatures themselves, make sure we're getting the maximum, you know, security and privacy out of the current tech that we have. So it's, it's beautiful to see that he's uh, continuing to, to study and, and improve them. And actually, I found it. One legend is going to work with another one. So he said, I will work with Arctic Mine to evaluate changes to ring size, fees, and block size scaling parameters, balance mm -hmm. privacy, usability, and decentralization. Yeah, I mean, my understanding is they, they, they want to kind of, you know, in, in make an improvement before full membership proofs, right? Um, mm -hmm. So that we could kind of thwart any, any attacks now. And you know the the sizes of, of things are gonna go up anyway with full membership proof, so it kind of gets the the network ready in that regard. Yeah, so um, definitely another thing to cool. donate to. Um, kind of, I wish I had the GIF open with uh, "Take my money" and the guy from uh, <laughs> forgot what show. <laughs> okay, now um, this one is interesting. So. It says from Thomas uh, Mass, May, May, Massey, I think. Massey, congressman. Massey, congressman, uh, this is how the Constitution dies by tie vote. The amendment to require a warrant to spy on Americans goes down in flames. This is sad Amer for America. The Speaker doesn't always vote in the House, but he was a tiebreaker to He voted I against mean, warrants. How crazy is that? That the Speaker mm -hmm. had to vote this time. And he used that power. And use that power for, for evil. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Against. But, and, you know, he's supposed to stand. I mean, politically, where he stands, uh, doesn't that, that move doesn't align with, you know, who he claims to be otherwise. I don't know him too well, but he's supposed to be kind of have these conservative ideals, right? Um, I would think liberty, privacy, <laughs> Fourth Amendment <laughs> would, would, be, would be part of those ideals, right? <laughs> Fourth Amendment, kind of a big thing from the perspective of a true conservative um, that supposedly believes in the Constitution. So, yeah, dude, these fucking, they're all bought, they're all completely bought out. Somebody like this, Thomas Matt, he, you know, he's the, he's the 1%. He's, there's one or two guys in Congress that are just freaking actual legit you know, liberty loving individuals. He's a real um, human and not a lizard person. Right. No. Yeah. <laughs> he is, he's a cool guy. Versus, I think he's like, uh, I think he's an engineer. Oh, uh, yes. Engineer. Farmer. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's an engineer. He's a farmer. I've seen like he's invented yeah, little think. contraptions for like taking care of his chickens and stuff. He's like, <laughs> He's a, he's a he's an intelligent guy. He's a renaissance man and he's, he's a liberty loving individual. He's he's you know he's like the like the one like one of the, the dudes back in the day right during the founding of this country they were they were amazing people, um, 
not too many of those people are in politics and they, they exist as people, uh, but they're not finding their way into, into politics because it's just so corrupt. Mm. They get, they get filtered out. Uh, yeah. I don't really know his story too much about how he's even kind of made it this far. On the list of the names of the people that voted against and, uh, this is interesting. Mm. Yeah. Not a surprise. Yeah. This is passed. Like it's done. It's, it's legal now. Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna now extend. What is it, what is it called? The uh, what is the actual? Um... Oh, the name of the legislation, or yeah, that they're extending. Um, I don't know, because I think. I know we kind of discussed this in the past. Yeah, we've talked about it in the past. But I, I don't know. I know we brought it up before, but it's just like it's one of those things that it's just pure evil. Like, you know, it's basically it allow, allows it's it's like a loophole, like allows the U.S. government to to spy on people without having to get a warrant. Uh, it's like they're it's only supposed to be used for for foreigners, but effectively there's ways to kind of get around that and, um, you know, look up people's information. Uh, in databases that the government has access to and they can do it at will without the need for a warrant. Which, was that even necessary? Because if I was, if I were dumb, to be honest, I wouldn't have done that because they're doing it anyway. And then I would have just hidden it under... Well, there's that whole thing too, but... You know? So... Yeah, yeah so it's... Oh, yeah, the, um... Oh, yeah, the, the actual, um bill to vote on was FISA 702. It was set to FISA, expire right. April 19th. Right. So they, um, so they had FISA. to, yeah. Yep. The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, right? So it's this ability to to spy on foreigners, uh, but there's loopholes in it wherein they could effectively spy on a lot of U.S. citizens and do it in a way where they don't need to get go and get a warrant. There's no due process. There's no process. They could just you know, essentially start looking up people's information and, and spying on them, U.S. citizens. But the thing is, it's not just on American citizens because the top companies in the world that everybody uses globally are in America, Google, Amazon, and they have all this data. So actually they're spying on the whole world and they're getting all, all this data. Um, so it's not only affecting American citizens, but it's affecting the, the whole world and... I mean, this yeah. gives you a little insight into, you know, what if something came before the floor of Congress with regards to banning Monero, right? Um, Have they ever? I don't would think you, I would, would you see a uh, sim similar outcome? I mean, it's kind of a it's kind of a very similar similar issue at the end of the day. Have they ever said the word Monero in uh, court so far? Uh, in no, Ooh, not really. No, yeah, they haven't uttered uh, the word yet. <laughs> Probably they bring too much coins. attention to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's <laughs> never they've, they've talked about privacy coins and things like that, but they they never. I don't think they've ever said Monero by name in reports and stuff. Um, but I don't think any Congress person has said it by name yet. Mm -hmm. Not as far hey, as I know. On, the, on the floor of Congress. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, not yet. Um, got two more stuff. For this week, so uh, body said, or maybe we're all foreigners to the sovereign state that are the politicians and bureaucrats. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's an interesting way to view it. Monero um, strongly people on privacy talks wrote. So KickPay is one of the easiest ways to utilize crypto at some of your favorite stores. In March, we had over eighty percent of gift cards purchased with XMR, over ten percent in Bitcoin, and five percent in Trocador app swaps. And you can get a MasterCard with um, in the US with and Visa using Monero. And you can do all kinds of amounts. You can do ten dollars to one thousand dollars per card. So that's cool. And then this one I wasn't able I know Tux one time you were able to kind of open it somehow. Uh, try it. Ar um try archive.org. Archive. Here, let me see if I can Let's 
Yeah, yeah, just copy that link and paste it in there and see if someone had archived it as a working archive. It tends to work. Wait, no. Yeah, do the one from April 7th. No, you had it, right? Go back, go back. Yep. Now, mm -hmm. scroll down and go. I do the first one, April 7th. Stop, scroll up, scroll up. See, see April? There you go. Now click oh. on just one of those snapshots. Probably the first one. That's oh, right. Okay. Ah. I'll try again. No. Screw the Washington Post. Me and my homies hate the Washington Post. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, the title is essentially Lawmakers and Bill's Sprawling Plan to Expand Online Privacy Protections. Um, yeah, but if I can open it. I got it. I got, you got it. it. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay, cool. I'm going to stop mine. That was the last time. Sometimes my VPN does it, sometimes it doesn't, but it, it did work this time. So Nice. Uh, da, 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 there it is. Bam. All right, here we go. Okay, let's take a look. So... Um, key federal lawmaker Sunday unveiled a sweeping proposal that would, for the first time, give consumers broad rights to control how tech companies like Google, Meta, and TikTok use their personal data, a major breakthrough in the decades-long uh, fight to adopt national online privacy protections. Eh. Okay. Um, so this new bill hasn't passed yet. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be like what, you know, what... The European Union has uh, it's going to be an attempt at, at that, right? So probably a lighter and, version. Yeah, a lighter version mandating uh, you know that, that that companies have to follow certain rules with regards to people's data and securing their data and uh, how they use people's data. Um, but yeah, guys, we, we we know this isn't this isn't the route to to no, this salvation. is not. This is just yeah. Really, you need to use things that have no concern of your data being available to the companies use things that are end-to-end -end encrypted um there's already services that exist that respect your privacy or or have end-to-end -end encryption for the data they store for you that's the that's the real way it's not relying on the government to wag their finger at companies and take money take money from companies which really should be going back to the taxpayer like with these massive fees like oh yeah google got fined 10 billion dollars Woo! guess who that goes to mm -hmm. not you it's not going to you. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, you know, you, you you look into things like this and you see there's people on both sides that are putting a lot of energy and effort into either trying to pass this or make sure it doesn't get passed. And uh, when you when you're really looking at the end of the day, often the effort that's that's going into it and the and the money that's funding that effort has some incentive where where they'll benefit from it. Then they're not looking to pass these these laws because it's going to benefit the people but at the end of the day it's usually some corporation that ends up somehow benefiting from i think this, companies should from be from this new like, legislation that's yeah. supposedly going to i think they should be held somewhat liable um mm -hmm. but not in the way that the, gov the government just uses this as a means to steal more money out of the economy and then i think that like consumers should be the ones holding them liable by mm -hmm. suing them, refusing to use their services, um, wh whatever. But yeah, look, like if I, if I were in Congress, I mean, I don't know this well enough. I'd have to research it on the SERP, you know, but I, I assume I'd, I, this is something, you, you know, you definitely vote for. But the whole, the whole, what we're saying is, is, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's just more. <laughs> We, we need less rules. We need we, we need to start yep. like getting getting rid of legislation, not creating new yeah, legislation. This is not the answer. <laughs> we we need to start eliminating rules, departments, uh, eliminating the government, not using government to give people liberty, but taking away government to give people liberty. So any any you know it's it's easy to kind of look at this and be like oh but it, but it's good. It's going to help people protect their privacy, but it just rarely is you know that's just not just not how it works the the more rules and legislation the the worse we 
We all like, are these companies suddenly going to be like, oh, yeah, we, we we actually care about privacy? It's like, no, like, they're not good. They're just going to, like, work around these rules as hard as they can. Mm -hmm. uh, and right. It'll, it'll be hard for certain companies to work around it, and other companies will be somehow easier for them to work around it, right? And they'll be benefiting. It'll give them competitive advantage. And, you know, it's, it's like what we see with any of these other mandates that come out that are supposed to protect the people from corporations. It's like just some small swath of those corporations end up benefiting even more. But so, with your wallets, people. Uh, yeah. But here's the thing. So, Use um, whatever. Google, all these platforms that are free, but why are they free? Because you're the product, like you're the data. So you're a gold mine, actually. So then if that's going to happen, what if maybe, I mean, that'll be cool. I don't think you're going to do it, but what if you pay to use Google, whatever, and then you get to just need your data. But I don't think they're going to be happy with that. Even that's if they make Facebook, that's what Facebook said, is that if you pay, you won't sell your data. And that turned out to not be true. Yeah. Uh, these companies are, they're, not going to like no matter what they're they're too far gone it's yeah. not things going to change for the good ultimately you just have to use something else yeah the, the incentives are always towards uh corruption in the you know so that's that's the way it's going to be so we have to prevent we have to create tools that essentially can't be corrupted and taken advantage of which is what we're talking about here every week um so guys this was the new section i want to mention before that we have 37 people watching on youtube 23 likes but on twitter we have 152 people and six likes and only five uh, tweet, uh retweets so if you're watching on twitter specifically or x however you want to call it please go ahead and like and, and retweet because it helps us a lot there's a lot of you watching there so uh, it just helps the show grow and you know spread the the monero word so um go ahead and do that and other than that, um, we have price, we have dev, we have a lot of stuff still going. So. We, we got a, we got a lot more to go. Oh my god! As always, it's a, it's always a marathon. Uh, no. no thanks to me. Keep keep labeling <laughs> over here. I love this stuff, guys. This is yeah, this is what I like to do. Um, the George the George Gammon thing. We'll bring it up later. No, oh, yeah, maybe maybe when we have viewers on stage, if we get some Argentinians to jump up. Um, I know there's a few out there that are listening right now. Uh, Gombat, if you're around, you want to jump up. Uh, we could talk about that. Love to get your your full take or reaction to what George Gammon's experience was in Argentina and what the what the true scene crypto scene is. Seems it seems like he missed the whole Cuevas thing, but yeah. So I, I'd love to get your take on that. Uh, but Tony, thanks so much. Stick around if you can. Let's keep on moving. Price yep. report. All right, thanks right, always, Tony.